All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Block County Legislative Body is now in session. The Honorable Jerome Moon, Chairman Presiding. All persons having business with this Honorable Commission, draw near, give attention, and you shall be heard. God save the United States of America, the State of Tennessee, and this Honorable Commission. Dr. Jerry Russell, pastor of Fairview United Methodist Church, will lead us in the prayer. Mr. Commissioner and Chairman and Commissioners and uh, servants of Blunt County and servants of this community, I'd like to make one statement, and it's a statement of encouragement before I pray. I've just recently returned from Guatemala. And while we were in Guatemala, there were 31 of our Blount County citizens there, and there's quite a buzz in Guatemala in these days because they have a calendar that is ending. And they're wondering, is there any date that will lead them into a future? We come here tonight with a future that is good because we live in Blount County. There's a wonderful seal that's above your head that demonstrates three great institutions of this county that lead us. And there are bright spots in this county besides athletics of football and basketball and other things. The bright spot that enables our community to be what it is is education, industry, and religion. And so you come here tonight to do the business of this community. And we want to bless you as you do that community. Because this community is a wonderful place to live, and you know that. It's great people who want a future for their children and want a future for us as a, a group of people to help our state and help our region, help our nation, and ultimately affect the world. And I want to say to you tonight that these are troubled days and there's a bit of fear that's in our community as a pastor, I know that. But I remind you tonight the words of scripture that says, love casts out fear. And we come here to bless you tonight with the love of God as you serve our community. Would you allow me to pray for you and with you? Father, I thank you tonight for these servants of our community who give of their time and who stretch their mind and open their heart to do that which is best for all of us who live in these beautiful hills and this beautiful community called Blunt County. We give you thanks tonight that they work diligently for the good of all and tonight we pray for wisdom on all who are gathered here. We pray that you would give to us the kind of care that allows us to love you, to love our neighbor, and to have a healthy respect of self-love for ourselves. So tonight, God, I ask that you would bless each person who is here. Give us wisdom that is beyond ourselves. Give us courage to do that which others might hesitate. And grant to us a hope that will lead us into a brighter day in Blunt County. Father, we thank you for this beautiful community that you have blessed us with, and we know that you have a future for us in these days that sometimes are a bit discouraging in the way in which we face them. Give us courage to face forward. Give us strength to move in a direction that honors you, that allows us to care for one another. And we thank you for the gift of life today and for the joy of being servants. For he who came into the world who was a king but became a person, and he was a person who became a servant and said the greatest task was to be a servant. So tonight, Lord, bless these who have offered themselves in servanthood and all of us who are here to be encouraged and to offer information and to live in community together. And we offer our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Lieutenant Alexander Bonneman, Young Marines, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance of the American flag.
Thank you. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone to the June 21st, 2012 Blount County Board of Commissioners meeting. Thank you, Dr. Russell, not only for your prayer, but for your words of inspiration. On behalf of the commission, the chair thanks the Lieutenant Alexander Bonham and Young Marines for the presentation of the colors. At this time, we'll read the emergency evacuation procedures. In the event of an emergency evacuation, alarm will sound. Everyone should exit the building by the way of the near stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you've reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. The commission will now come to order. Please register your presence by voting yes. Mr. Clark. You have 19 present, two absent, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Commissioner Harrison has a conflict tonight. Commissioner Lambert had cataract surgery today. So at this time, the chair will stand for a motion to set the agenda. Mr. Lewis moves, Commissioner Birchfield seconds. Discussion. Mr. Burkhalter, you're recognized. Just a moment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to move item F1 to reclassify that as D1. I believe it would be appropriate to put that underneath elections instead of being new business. I have a request to move F1 to D1. Is there any objection? Hearing no objection, we'll move it to D1. Mr. Folks, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I respectfully suggest that we reverse items F4 and F5 on the agenda. Uh, mm -hmm. Item 4 sets the tax rate. Item 5 is a discussion of the budget common sense would seem to say that we should discuss the budget before we set the tax rate. Thank you. Without objection, hearing no objection, you recognize Mr. Burkhalter. Historically, this body has always uh, set the tax rate before moving on to the budgeted item. Therefore, I would like to keep with the, with the policy and the history of this, of this committee or this uh, commission by setting the tax rate, then discussing the budget. You placing that in the form of a motion, Commissioner Burkhalter? I understand. There is objection, Commissioner Folks. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Lewis to set the agenda. We've had one exception, moving the election to D1. Are the members ready for the question? Those in favor of setting the agenda as published with the one exception, moving the election F1 to D1, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. We have 17 yeses and two yeses and Seven, two noes. Two noes. The agenda is set. We'll new, now move to item B, the consent calendar. The chair will stand for a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. 
Vote yes to approve the consent calendar. Are you requesting the floor, Mr. Folks? No. On the consent calendar? Excuse no, that's, uh, I think you left it on. Yes, sir. Vote yes to approve the consent calendar. Vote no not to approve. Please vote. Commissioner Merle. Okay. Have 19 yeses. Two 19 yes, zero no. The consent calendar is approved. At this time, we have a special presentation. The chair recognizes Commissioner Lale and Blunt County Mayor Ed Mitchell. If you'll come forward. This time, if there's anyone here from uh, any of the veterans organizations um, or so forth that would like to stand with us as we make this uh, presentation, would you all come forward, please, too? And Mayor Mitchell and Mr. Kiker. Do you want us to come to you, sir? We'll be glad to. Let's go. This is it the value of electronics that's portable. Uh, Commissioner Lale, I believe Representative Ramsey and uh, yes. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Samples, Commissioner Wright, and uh, Mr. Helton served with, with uh, the honoree, and if they would like to come forward, at least uh, wanted to recognize them as serving on the commissions with, with Mr. Kiker. Okay, we, we're gathered here as part of our meeting tonight is to honor this gentleman and I'd like to tell a short story 38 years ago when I first met this man and, and we uh, we were on opposite sides of the spectrum then I was probably where a lot of you all are right now and he was sitting on the commission and uh, and I went to him about a, a situation and we had a long discussion and and he, he wasn't all that positive begin with because he had a he had a, uh, a point of view and so forth but at the end of the, the conversation as we shook hands to leave he said young man he said we'll work this out and this man has made a valiant effort throughout the years to do those kinds of things to strive to do the right thing and it is absolutely my privilege to even stand here with him at this moment. And I appreciate you, Mr. Kiker, from a personal level, even though you did beat me in golf that time. But, Mr. Mayor, would you have something also to add before we do the proclamation? Uh, Mr. Kiker has been a valuable part of this community for, for many, many years. And those of you that have, that have ever heard of Kiker Bottoms, well, that's, that's Mr. Kiker's farm, and it's been a farm a uh, working farm in this uh, community for over a hundred years and the, the things that he has done for Blount County not only as a commissioner but just as a citizen have been amazing. I've always admired him and I, I think this is a most fitting proclamation tonight that we're doing for him. Yes sir, that is correct and with your permission I would read the proclamation. Excuse me. Whereas James M. Kiker was elected to the Blount County Quarterly Court in August 1960 and served through August 1969 and was elected again in 1978 and served through August 1994 with having served a total of more than 25 years as a member of the Blount County Quarterly Court and the Blount County Board of Commissioners. And while serving in those capacities and during his term as a county commissioner in 1990 through 94, he was elected as chairman pro tem and chairman. And also served on numerous committees, including the Budget and Finance Committee, Agricultural Extension Committee, and the Veterans Affairs Committee. And whereas James M. Kiker 
served his country as a member of the armed services in World War II on the European front and afterwards supported veteran causes as a member of the Blount County Memorial Post number 5154 Veterans of Foreign Wars, faithfully devoting his time and efforts to veterans for more than 65 years. And whereas during the 1990s, James M. Kiker contributed over 170 acres of land to the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency for the preservation and habitation of wildlife at Kiker Bottoms Refuge in Blount County, Tennessee, to be used for the education of school children and for all citizens to observe, enjoy, and learn about the beauty of God's creations. And whereas, all people who have known James Kiker know his joy and purpose in life and has been, excuse me, know his joy and purpose in life has been to give from the heart to those in need and to his community, never desiring praise nor recognition for his unselfish acts of kindness. And whereas the Blount County Board of Commissioners and the Blount County Mayor wish to express their sincere appreciation to Jim Kiker for his public service and contributions to the citizens of Blount County. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Blount County Board of Commissioners and the Blount County Mayor assembled in session this 21st day of June, 2012, that the dedicated public service of James M. Kiker to the citizens of Blount County, Tennessee, is severely appreciated and is hereby honored and recognized. Mr. Kiker. I didn't realize I was going to get into this and not come up here. <laughs> but I appreciate it. I've enjoyed serving the people of Blunt County. I love Blunt County, and I love the government. Thank you, Mr. Kiker. And uh, the Honor Guard has offered to come and offer their salute, uh, Representative Ramsey, Mr. Samples, Mr. Wright, and all members of this commission, the mayor. We. Jim, thank you for everything. It's just, Bob, would you like to say something? I just wanted to, to say thank you. That Jim, Jim's one of my favorite public servants. I served on the commission with him. He took over the chairmanship when I left, and it embarrassed me because all his meetings lasted an hour less than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Jim. Thank you all. At this time, I'd like to recognize Commissioner Burke Halter for, and the mayor for a special presentation. Or it's Mike Lewis. Commissioner Lewis, if you'll come forward. You've got your, you have the floor, Mr. Mayor. Tonight, uh, I'm reading a proclamation for Nancy Sintel, who has just retired as the Director for Community Action. Myself and Commissioner Lewis are, are here because both of us are on the board with Community Action. We've had the pleasure of working with her. Whereas Nancy Sintel received a master's degree in social work from the University of Tennessee, after retiring from the Department of Human Services, she was hired August the 1st, 2008, as the Executive Director for the Blount County Community Action Agency. Whereas Nancy was active in implementing various policies and procedures bringing Blount County Community Action Agency to the standards associated with professional businesses. In her first year as Director, Nancy obtained her certification in nonprofit management. She attended training seminars and classes on a regular basis along with the Tennessee Association of Community Action. She attended community action meetings in Nashville, always striving to better herself as a director, but more importantly, to learn how to improve the operations of the agency. And whereas during her tenure as executive director, Nancy implemented a three-year strategic plan, which was the first strategic plan for the agency. Also, she initiated, set up, and maintained the agency's webpage, blog, and inquiries. 
Nancy stayed in communication with the community, local political leaders, and media to inform the public, local businesses, churches, and others, not only of the needs of the agency might have, but also the positive work being done through the agency. This community outreach effort has resulted in monetary donations and additional volunteers. And whereas Nancy always represented Blount County Community Action Agency with great professionalism through her everyday community interaction as a com consummate professional and as a member of the Blount County Elder Watch and through her vital role in various fundraising events, including her major role and effort in bringing the Harlem ambassadors to Blount County for the Mobile Meals on Wheels. And whereas Nancy's time with Blount County Community Action has been valued and appreciated, best wishes to her, her husband Mike, and her family as she begins a new season in life helping to care for her mother and her two very special grandchildren. The entire Blount County community is a better place to live because of the leadership that Nancy Sintel has shown in all of her roles, both professionally and personally. Now, therefore, I, Ed Mitchell, Mayor of Blount County, and we, the Blount County Board of Commissioners, do hereby give honor and recognition to Nancy Sintel and invite all Blount County citizens to join us in applauding the accomplishments of this outstanding community servant and expressing our appreciation to her for her many years of service to our community. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. I just want to personally thank Nancy for all she has done. She, um, I served on the board with Nancy for, I guess, two years now, and uh, have served in a lot of nonprofit uh, agencies across the county. And without a doubt, Nancy has, has been one of the most professional uh, and well-versed uh, people that I've, I've had the pleasure of dealing with. So, Nancy, thank you so much. Uh, Bob, did you want to say anything? Bob Ramsey also served on the on the board, serves on the board with Nancy, and uh, has had even more experience with her than I have. And, and uh, well, I, I, I want to say congratulations, Nancy. I'm certainly honored to be a part of this celebration. Uh, Nancy took over at a very difficult time. Uh, we had uh, uh, Mr. Harris had passed away, and we had a part-time uh, caretaker, and Nancy took over. There was a, a great uh, change in in uh, membership of, of the different departments and she did a fabulous job in pulling us all together I want to say thank you congratulations on a second retirement and th this is the community action agency is a is really a huge asset to Blount County and Nancy made sure that the folks that needed uh, help got it it's a multi-million dollar source of, of uh, revenue for the county we appreciate what you did Nancy Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to God and to the Board of Directors for giving me the opportunity to be of service to Blount County Community Action Agency and the low-income households, seniors, and disabled people in Blount County. Uh, I look forward in the future to having other opportunities to serve Blount County, um, and I just appreciate this so much. Thank you. Two people who made a big difference in the quality of life of Blount County. We moved to item C, public input on items on the agenda. Tonight, I would like to go by rows. There'll be people here that, so if you'd like to speak, I'll start at the beginning. If you'll raise your hand, if you'll come forward and, and identify yourself to the commission and uh, You'll be recognized. I am Carol Ross. Uh, I am in District 1. I would like to first address item F8, 
with a question or a couple of questions. How can an authority in existence less than a month without a full board of directors get a line of credit to reimburse the county for a $1 million loan? And how can they vote to assume it from the county? If they decide to sell it within the next, say, week or month or whenever and get a profit, will the county get a percentage of the profit? My next item regards the budget and the health insurance that's provided for retirees from the county. This fund has not been funded for the future. It is funded year to year instead of looking to the future and getting monies annually added to a fund so that the employees for the county who are retired will be guaranteed this health insurance. We're playing with a fire that could easily cause a lot of problems. The employees also have retirement funding that's not being does not have a fund that's added to annually. It also is just, it's just provided for year to year and it needs to have somehow to plan for the future. The employees have received compensation increases during the last three years even though they haven't received salary increases. Their health benefits are being paid fully by the county and their contributions to retirement are being uh, compensated partially. One thing that needs to be done with the current budget is to eliminate the salary increase and add that money to either the health insurance benefits or the retirement fund, the retirement benefits fund. I thank you for your time. Anyone on the next row? Ms. King? Thank you. I'm Linda King with Citizens for Blount County's Future, District 4. First, I'm happy to say that no tax increase is in the works. That, or an even lower tax rate, is the right choice in this economy. However, before you vote tonight on the proposed budget, I wish you'd look at all the financial facts. No spending cuts have been made, and we're planning to use the rainy day fund to balance the budget. All that does is push the can down the road to the day when we'll see an enormous tax increase. It's inevitable unless you demand cuts now. We can't continue more and higher spending each and every year. News reports come out daily about cities and counties around our country who are in dire conditions because of uncontrolled expenditures. Do you think that can't happen in Blount County? Our debt needs to come down and our government trimmed back. You're all intent on giving county employee raises because in your eyes, they've had none in recent past. However, facts show that each year the taxpayers pay the employees increased benefit cost, which to them remains free. We have an unfunded liability with their overly generous retirement package and their substantial 401k plans. Where else can you get a two and a half to one match? So yes, they have seen increases every year, unlike the private sector retirees on Social Security and the private sector employees who have seen their 401k matches disappear and their benefits reduced while their insurance costs have increased. There are so many topics which should be discussed in this budget process, including how drug fund money can actually be used to purchase many items now done with property tax money. That would ultimately mean a cut in the sheriff's requested budget. Please don't just hurriedly vote to pass an unbalanced budget. Instead, demand cuts and accountability to the taxpayers. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Karen Miller from District 4. I'd like to address the budget issue. This budget does not reflect the priorities of Blount County. Tonight, this budget you have before you is not balanced as it is being claimed to be. 
Once again, the can is being kicked down the road over the county's debt not being dealt with. Using $900,000 out of the uh, debt service fund is wrong. Schools may be looking to make cuts to address their shortage of funds. Cuts are what is needed in this county's wasteful spending practices. When the Parks and Recs Department have a $1 million balance and have an increase in their budget that is 14.7% from up from last year, there is something seriously wrong. Why does the sheriff need $32,800 for a SONA site scan? and a $259,000 horse barn with four stalls. The taxpayers should not be paying $250,000 for, uh, for a land purchase for the Sheriff Department and $40,000 to the Heritage Center. Making cuts in spending is the only way Blount County can get out of debt. May God press on your hearts to do the right thing for your children and grandchildren in the future of Blount County by making the necessary cuts in wasteful spending. Having standard and poor looking at the county's debt should be a wake-up call to this commission to do the right thing before it's too late. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Deanne Martini and a resident of Blunt County District 4. I am a concerned citizen regarding the issue of the current budget proposals for Blunt County. I am a fairly new resident and appalled at the financial irresponsibility demonstrated within this commission. We seemingly have a runaway spending train and those who are running this train are avoiding all the signs that say bridge out ahead regarding unsustainable financial liabilities in this budget of $230 million uh, indebtedness. I recently heard a report on Fox Business News that stated state, county, and city levels of government have a total of $3.4 trillion of unfunded pension liabilities. You can certainly include Blunt County's crushing indebtedness of unsustainable employee entitlements. Your actions prove that you do not care how you spend entrusted taxpayer dollars. It's really shameful. It's like watching the movie The Godfather of Blunt County, utilizing unethical conflicts of interest on every level of county government activity. I'm not going to name specific names, but you all know who you are and who the main godfather of Blunt County is. I'll let you figure that one out for yourselves. You have all the bases covered to protect yourselves from any scrutiny except for public meetings like this one. You are banking on the notion that your elected constituents should be kept ignorant. Even the local newspaper refuses to print the truth about the irresponsible spending of tax dollars. How convenient not to have any checks and balances either, choosing not to have a charter form of government. You've managed to re reward yourselves very well except for one fact. This course of financial irresponsibility is unsustainable. The train wreck of bankruptcy is on the way, like many other cities have occurred across America. The credit rating for Blunt County is forthcoming. We're all looking for those results. The Channel 8 News reported that Tennessee is the most corrupt state in the country. Given the history of this state and what I have observed in my own local government, I don't have to be persuaded to agree with this report. Please know that God hates injustice and is very aware of it in Blunt County. He has promised his people that vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. The Bible says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Many citizens would probably be here at this meeting, but for years they have suffered in fear of backlash, harassment, and intimidation for speaking out against misuse of taxpayer dollars in Blunt County. Please open your eyes to the citizens of Blunt County who are mourning about your poor leadership, and you know which ones you are. If the shoe of admonishment fits, you are probably wearing it. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and I hope you will hear this truth.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jay Polk, chair of the Blunt County Libertarian Party. This commission has never voted against a spending increase, and our mayor has never vetoed one. Last year, this caused a jump in the property tax from $2.04 to $2.11. So this year, we're supposed to be thankful that you didn't increase the tax rate further. But again, like my fellow citizens have, have pointed out, it's my understanding that the tax rate didn't change because, uh, because of cuts, but because other accounts were used to offset some of the department budget increases. So the spending continues. Ladies and gentlemen, by, re by refusing to be good representatives and good stewards of our tax money, you are creating a mess that our children and grandchildren will be forced to clean up. Is this the legacy that you wish to leave behind? I'm a libertarian, so I know what it's like to lose. But I also know what it's like to be right. So tonight, I ask you to do the right thing and start cutting spending. Instead of leaving a broken Blunt County for our children to fix, let's leave a healthy, prosperous Blunt County for our children to enjoy. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Come forward, please, sir. My name's Dodd Crow. Uh, sorry to take up your time. Uh, but I promised that I'd be a voice. What? Start the clock up. Give your district and the item you're going to speak to. Sir. Oh, That's district. All right. That's all right. You're um, I promised I would be a voice. The um, way I get it, y'all are doing a pretty good job, honestly, because we got everybody moving from down to no from the north and everybody moving up from the south to get these great services at these cheap taxes. Um, but I'm really here to talk about our children because we say that education is number one. We've got it on our seal. I heard this body refer to our children as our number one resource in this county. But we don't back it with our money. We've got some great buildings. We're $683 below average. I know you've heard that before, but I thought I'd throw it in there before you voted again. Um, every county around us spends more per pupil except Monroe County. So I know you have a tough job. A lot of people are pleased with the job you do because everybody's trying to move to Blount County. But if we want to hold that in the future, we're going to have to invest in our young people. We still have great schools, but you usually get what you pay for. And we've not been paying so much lately. We're $683 but low average per pupil, times that by about 14000 and that adds up to be some money that we're not spending. I hope you can get creative. I know you've got a hard job, but we cannot forget to educate our students. Uh, a year of prison in the state of Tennessee costs about $40,000. Recidivism rates about 87%. Well, let's go ahead and invest now so we don't have to pay later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Harry Groth, John District 9. The, uh, I, I want to applaud the uh, Budget Committee for uh, some creative recommendation, of a creative recommendation with regards to their uh, instructions to the office holders. For too many years, the county employees have been given a pay raise as a percentage of payroll without uh, any deference to how that might be distributed. And, and to the uh, credit of the Budget Committee, they did uh, make the recommendation that the office holders should consider giving each employee $1,250 and uh, perhaps curtail some of the oh, inequitable practices that have been experienced in the past where people have been promoted to, to uh, supervisory positions or supervisors get the dominant share of any pay raise. I wish that the Commission, though, and the, and the Budget Committee, Mr. Chairman, would show the same kind of concern about those same employees and their ability to retire or their ability to perhaps enjoy the medical benefits. If you have looked at the, uh, the state's audit report for the Blount County for this past year in pages 85 through 87, 
It talks about an unfunded mandate of $19 million in the employee's retirement fund because someone, apparently, doesn't think that it's important enough to fund the future demands of the employee's retirement plan so they can benefit from it when they retire. And then we go to the two pages following that in the audit report, and we discover that there's another $23 million of unfunded retirement benefits for those same employees, Mr. Chairman. Now, if we think those employees deserve the kind of pay raise that would give them the benefits we hope they would all be able to enjoy, then don't you think they deserve the same consideration when it comes to retirement benefits or medical benefits? We as the Blount County citizens pay for all of those benefits today. It's worth almost $7,000 per employee. Who's going to pay for those benefits when they retire, Mr. Chairman? How are this county going to go forward without paying some financial investment into the future to be able to pay for those benefits? Certainly their children's uh, education has been invested in with the hardware and the bricks and the mortar. But those same employees that are engaged in teaching those children, I bet they tell them about planning and saving to the future. I bet they have math classes that determine what savings and investment are talking about. Do we need to maybe have some savings and investment classes for the Budget Committee, Mr. Chairman? I would vote for that. Thank you, sir. We'll now move on to item D1, which the commission will now elect the appointee to the Smoky Mountain Tourism Development Authority pursuant to rules, local rule 7C and D. The nominees, Commissioner Farmer, Commissioner Carver, Mayor Mitchell, Mr. Clerk, will you call the roll by district? <clears throat> District 1, seat A, Birchfield. Farmer. Seat B, Burkholder. Farmer. District 2, seat A, Harrison. Is absent. absent. District 2, seat B, Lewis. Farmer. District 3, seat A, Samples. Farmer. Seat B, Kaler. Farmer. District 4, seat A, Farmer. Seat B, Hasty. Seat C, Moon. Farmer. Uh, District 5, seat B, Carver. Farmer. District 6, seat A, Lale. Farmer. District 6, seat B, Hilton. Farmer. District 7, seat A, Foltz. Mitchell. Uh, seat B, Green. Farmer. District 8, seat A, Gamble. Farmer. Seat B, Wright. Wright. Commissioner Wright. Farmer. District 9, seat A, French. Farmer. Uh, seat B, Merle. Farmer. District 10, seat A, Kirby. Uh, District 10, seat B, Melton. Okay, you have 17 for Farmer and uh, one for Carver and one for Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The nominee received more than 11 votes. Commissioner Farmer is appointed to the Smoky Mountain Tourism Development Authority. Still looking at items on the agenda under F, new business. Because the county attorney, who's also the commission's attorney and legal counsel, is here in his official capacity tonight working in order to save 
taxpayer money. The chair asks for unanimous consent to take up item F6, the resolution concerning the sheriff's training facility, as the next item under new business. So without objection, hearing no objection, the chair will stand for a motion on item F6. Here, Mr. Helton and Mr. Melton. Helton and Melton. So the motion is to adopt resolution 1206-008. Mr. Helton, you're recognized. Now, County Attorney Craig Garrett, come to the mic. Thank you, Commissioner Hilton. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I was asked to come to speak on this resolution, and I assume that, uh, that the commission, I think the resolution is rather straightforward, but the commission needs to understand or wants to understand exactly uh, what's in, going on with these property owners who have the county sued. Um, the resolution, of course, is merely to buy this land, which is adjacent to the sheriff's training facility, seven. 0.35 acres to buy it from drug fund money, which is money that has been accumulated over the years by the Sheriff's Department through their drug operations, it includes forfeitures, fines, things of that nature. Uh, the Sheriff uh, is, is interested in having this property, which is a good thing. He thinks that, that it's something that is needed to expand the facility in the future. Uh, the Mayor thinks it is a good proposition because it is going to resolve two lawsuits that we have pending against the county by the property owners from who are purchasing this property. Uh, the, the, the basis of the lawsuits, in essence, was that it took a special exception of the Board of uh, Zoning Appeals to, to allow the training facility the, to become a regional training facility. Uh, the property owners had objected to that. Uh, the special exemption was granted, and then ultimately two lawsuits were filed. The first lawsuit was a lawsuit seeking uh, before I became county attorney, and it's actually being handled by uh, Rob Goddard and his firm, but it is a lawsuit that seeks declaratory judgment as well as monetary damages. Uh, the other lawsuit is the second lawsuit that was filed uh, while I am county attorney, which I'm handling, and where they've filed what's called a petition for certiorari, asking the circuit court to overrule and reverse the actions of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, through the negotiations with the property owners and their attorneys, they basically want out of there. They just don't want to be there anymore. Uh, we had discussed with them for some time possibly buying this property, but indicated we would only do so for its appraised value. It has been appraised by a certified appraisal. The $235,000 is the amount of the appraisal. By the agreement reached with the property owners through their attorney, by purchasing this property, and paying the court costs, not attorney fees, but merely the court costs pending in these two lawsuits. That will resolve both of these lawsuits. The county will be receiving the property. Uh, we will not be spending any more funds out of the general fund on attorney fees and potentially damages, even though I don't think they're the best lawsuits in the world. I can't say for sure that we'll win them. I think we probably will. But it'll be thousands of dollars down the road when we ultimately get there. So I feel this is a win-win situation for the county. Uh, for the Sheriff's Department uh, and for everyone involved, including the property owners who are not happy living next to the training facility. So that's basically what's going on here in a nutshell. Uh, we will not, this resolution merely appropriates the money, but before it is closed, we will, of course, uh, have a title opinion done on the property to make sure that, that we know that the property is free and clear and to, that know what mortgage indebtedness is there, make sure those are satisfied in the closing. There will also be signed a full release, releasing the county from any further liability at the time of the closing. So um, that's where we are in a nutshell, and I would certainly recommend that the commission approve this so that we can um, purchase this property and end these two lawsuits. I'd be glad to answer any questions that anyone may have. Mr. Post, recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Garrett, you're putting a pretty nice face on a pretty ugly situation. Um, the people that backed on that property had a very nice existence before the sheriff went over there and did what he did, put in his racetrack. And they didn't even object to that too much until the sheriff started running cars with sirens going and lights going at 11 and 12 o'clock at night. 
And I think anybody in this room would have been pretty upset about that. And in fact, they came before this commission on multiple occasions. On one occasion, they even played a tape that they had recorded of the goings on out there, right in their backyard. And after a year, more than a year, two years of going before the Planning Commission, going before the Commission, asking for some relief, all they asked was that, gee, maybe he could do this at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, not 11 o'clock at night. After all that, they felt compelled to sue the county to protect their own property. So I think it's a bit different than you described. And your question, uh, sir, do you have a question for me? Do you have a question for me? Oh, I certainly do, sir. Okay. I'm getting to it. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have a few more points of information that I would like from the mayor's attorney. Does the property being purchased under this resolution fall within the definition, the legal definition of real property? Yes. Are you familiar with Title 9-118 of the U.S. Attorney's Manual entitled the uh, Attorney General's Guidelines on Seized and Forfeited Property? No. Well, let me read you paragraph 9-118-740B. permission to read. Well, I don't know how I can ask my next question without reading him what's in the manual. One moment, sir. The commissioner asks unanimous consent to read the statement. Are there objections? Hearing no objection, please read, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me quote Title IX. This is from Title IX of the U.S. Attorney's Manual. It is, the subject matter is the distribution of drug funds and how they may be used. It's quite detailed. Let me quote. Items not payable from the, from the fund include the purchase of real property or any interest therein. So, uh, this transaction proposes to use this drug money, which these guidelines apply to, Do they? to purchase real property. Well, I'll let you decide that, but we certainly can't decide that tonight. Therefore, I move that we table this motion until we get an adequate legal review to see whether this is even a legal transaction. In addition, I would request a search of the records, Mr. Garrett, to find any other occasions where the sheriff may have used drug funds to purchase real property. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Folks. Mr. Folks, you've made a motion to table, to lay on the table. Is there, that a, is second? Is there a second to Mr. Folks' motion? I second. Ms. Merrill seconds. There's no debate. Those in favor of laying the, the motion on the table, vote yes. Those voting not to lay on the table, vote no. Please vote. The motion to lay on the table fails. The pending motion is to adopt resolution 1206008. 
Are the members ready for the question? No. Mr. Burkhalter, you're recognized. Ms. Merrill can go, Commissioner Merrill can go before me. Commissioner Merrill, you're recognized. Uh, yes, I have one more question, if I could, please. Yes, thank you. Your question is? Mine's a little bit different. Apparently, we're buying this to appease the landowners who are unhappy being next to it. There are other landowners in the area. We'll, how, how do we guarantee that we won't keep getting lawsuits? Mr. Garrett? Well, there's no guarantee that you won't get lawsuits. This lawsuit related to a specific action by the Board of Zoning Appeals that took place two years ago and time has expired for any further lawsuits over that special exception that was granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals. So there's going to be no more lawsuits over the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals relating to, to that action because it happened back in 2010 and there's just limited amount of time to challenge an action okay. by, by body. And I have one more question. Uh, let, let me bring Mr. French on and I'll come back to your, your request for information. The only, the only request that I have in light of the information that's been provided is, is I would like to know what the legality, what the legality of this purchase would be. I'd, I'd like to have this research before I vote on it. Uh, in light of the information that's been provided, are, are I, I'm making, not familiar with that particular uh, statute. So I, I would like to, to know if we could not investigate that and, and, and get an answer on the legality of the purchase. Mr. Commissioner French, are you making a motion to postpone? The motion to postpone has been made. Is there a second to the motion to postpone? I'll second. Motion's been made and second to postpone. Form of order section at date certain. Didn't hear a date certain. That, that's my question. It was made without date certain, so it's postponed indefinitely. The motion's been made and seconded to postpone the matter. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Burkhalter, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, uh, just to clarify with everybody that we are right now underneath a, a motion to postpone indefinitely, which is the equivalent of a motion to kill the current motion. If we were to vote in favor of it, then it would permanently kill the motion. Uh, I don't know if that was the intent of the motion maker when he made it. Uh, but second of all, while I have the floor, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask uh, our county attorney one question. You may state the question, sir. Uh, the question I have is, in light of the information that he's been given tonight, is it still his recommendation that we approve this resolution and go forward? Mr. Yes, Chairman. it is. Uh, I have discussed this in detail with the Sheriff's Department and I'm confident that it is proper. But I will look at that particular section that it's a federal law that I'm not sure it affects this fund and uh, this resolution merely makes the budget appropriation we won't close on it if I discover that that would apply or anything else that would stop it but I have discussed it with the sheriff's department looked at the regulations that they had and are confident as long as the purchase relates to training and that's why it, you know it, it applies to the training facility then the drug fund can be used for that and so I'm telling you that, that I think it can go forward. I wouldn't be here. I will look into that specific section, and if I discover that, that it would impede in any way, then we won't close the transaction. You know, this budget, this, this resolution before you merely appropriates the money from the drug fund to allow the transaction, but we certainly won't close it uh, until you know, I will look into that particular section, but I'm confident that, that, that it's proper to, to, to purchase the link. Thank you very much. Um, Based upon the information, I, I have no other questions. Just wanted to reaffirm that if we vote yes to the current motion that's on the floor, we will kill the motion. If you vote no, then we'll send it back for a full vote. The pending motion is to mo postpone the adoption of this resolution to postpone until in a time indefinite. So it would kill it would kill the motion. So 
vote. Uh, uh, members ready for the question? Mr. Folks, you recognized. I need to turn the mic on now you're on. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, these guidelines, Ms. Garrett, do refer to state a point of local. order, sir. We're we're okay. discussing the motion to postpone should be strictly on the motion to postpone. Um, we'll come back to that once we resolve the motion to postpone. Okay. Fair enough. Are the members ready for the question? Mr. French, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to clarify, my intent was not to kill the motion. I'm sorry. I'll clarify it. Well, the motion's Before, on the floor, been stated. My, it was it's my motion, I, and I, I'll change that motion. It was not the intent to kill the motion. My intent was to get the information before I can vote on this on this matter. So I will amend my motion to postpone it until next month's commission meeting or agenda commission uh, agenda meeting to where we can have the information where we can make the, the, the right decision. As Mr. Garrett said, he, he's not familiar with that statute. If we, and if we go ahead and approve the, the, the purchase and then he finds out that, you know, there's teeth in the statute, then, then we voted to do something that's against the law. And, and I don't want to do that. So Mr. I amend my motion. Well, uh, Commissioner French, the request of the chair to withdraw your motions in order. I withdraw the original motion. The orders, the ruling is For the, the, motion, if, if, the motion has been withdrawn. Would you like to make a new motion? Yes, sir. I move that we postpone the decision on this matter until next month's agenda commission meeting and we can move it forward to the regular commission meeting. It's been moved, postponed to the next month's commission meeting. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Folk, second. Discussion on the motion? Are the members ready for the question? The pending motion is to postpone this res adoption of this resolution until the next commission meeting. Mr. Folks, do you wish to be recognized? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this seems only a reasonable thing to do. Uh, we ought to be sure what the law is before we just go barging ahead. And believe me, this, this law is very clear. I read it to you. There's not much amb ambiguity in it. Thank you. Commissioner Birdsfield, you're recognized. I just want to state that Mr. Garrett already let us know that if it's not going to meet standard, then we're not going to proceed. So I don't see the problem in going ahead, getting it started, and if it doesn't, if it's illegal or doesn't meet the standards, then it stops there. Commissioner Samples, you're recognized. I'd like to ask the attorney a question. Would, uh, do you think that if this is postponed for one month, will it make any difference in the lawsuits? I don't know. Okay, I'm asking I don't you know if that'll the affect the settlement out. or not, but I was kind of <laughs> asked to get it together in a hurry because I know the you know, we've been negotiating, we've agreed on a price, and they're anxious to move. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if that will, you know. That's all I have. Are the members ready for the, are the, members ready for the question? The pending motion is a motion to postpone until the next commission meeting. Mr. Folks, do you wish the floor again, sir? You've spoken twice. You've spoken twice to the motion postponed. Again, are the members ready for the question? The pending motion is a motion to postpone until the next commission meeting. Vote yes to postpone. Vote no not to postpone. Please vote. You have five yeses, 14 noes, and two absences. The motion to postpone fails. The pending motion 
is to adopt resolution number 1206-008. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt. Please vote. We have 17 yeses, two noes, and two absences. The resolution is adopted. The next item of business is item F2A. The chair will stand for a motion on a budget transfer in the general county fund of $165,000. This is a transfer having to do with the adult detention center. Is there a motion? Mr. Sample moves. Is there a second? Mr. Lale. The motion is to approve the budget transfer of $165,000. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to approve the budget. Vote the, excuse me. Vote yes to approve the budget transfer. Vote no not to approve the transfer. We have 19 yeses and two yeses. The budget transfer is approved. Next item of business is F2B. The chair will stand for a motion on a budget transfer in the general county fund of $17,953. Has to do with data processing. Is there a motion? Mr. Melton moves, second. Mr. Carver seconds. The motion is to approve budget transfer of $17,953. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to approve the budget transfer. Vote no not to approve. Please vote. We have 19 yeses and two absences. The budget transfer is approved. Next item of business is item F2C. The chair will stand for a motion on a budget transfer in the debt service fund of $1,049,502.18. Mr. Sample moves. Mr. Lewis seconds. The motion is to approve the budget transfer of $1,049,052.18. Vote yes to approve the budget transfer. Vote no not to approve. Commissioner Birchfield. We have 19 yeses and two yeses. The transfer is approved. The next item of business, we have a number of budget increases. The first one is the chair will stand for a motion on item three, F3A, a resolution 1206004. A resolution to amend other capital projects fund by twenty thousand dollars. That's to repair a sewer line at William Blunt High School. Is there a motion? So Melton and French. The motion is to adopt resolution number twelve oh six oh oh four. Discussion. The pending motion is to adopt resolution twelve oh six oh oh four. Vote yes. To adopt the resolution. Vote no. Not to adopt. Yeses and two absences. The resolution is adopted. The next item of business is item F3B. The chair will stand for a motion on item F3B, resolution 1206005, a resolution to amend the general purpose school fund budget by $83,000. This is to cover projected deficits and transportation costs due to fuel adjustments. We have a motion on the floor to adopt F3B, 3C, D, and the last one, Commissioner Samples. So you don't move E. All the remaining budget increase items you're moving. 
Is there a second? Mr. Kaler seconds. Are the members ready for the question? Discussion? The pending motion is to adopt items F3B, C, D, and F. E and F. Vote yes to adopt these resolutions. Vote no not to adopt. Please vote. You have 19 yeses and two absent. 19 yes. These resolutions are adopted. Next item of business is item F4. The chair will stand for a motion on item F4, resolution 1206-009. A resolution setting the property tax for the year beginning July 1st, 2012, ending July, June 30th, 2013. Lale and Lewis. The motion is to adopt resolution 1206009. Commissioner Burkhalter, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to amend the following resolution as follows. I'd like to strike 73 cents from the county tax for general purposes and replace it by 70 cents. I would like to strike the 99 cents for the school tax and put in a dollar two, leaving the tax rate at 215. I would like to renumber section five to number section six five. and replace and insert a section five that reads as follows. Be it resolved, if there is a deficiency in the general county portion of the budget, between revenues and appropriations, then the fund balance for the general county portion shall be appropriated as needed to cure any such deficiency. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have an amendment on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Farmer seconds. Commissioner Folks, you're recognized. I didn't put my, my button on. Okay, no problem. Oh, Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yes, I did. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, um, this just is an example of the problem. We haven't even talked about the budget. This is the first time that this commission has, in, in its, all these commissioners have gotten together to talk about this budget. And here we are folks. setting a tax rate without even discussing the budget. I don't know how you can do that. It doesn't make any common sense. I don't care if we've done it for 50 years. We ought to change it. Thank you. Commissioner Hasty, you recognize. Mr. Chairman, can I have uh, Mr. Burkhalter uh, ask a question to Chair Foyser? Can I have Mr. Burkhalter give his pennies back Chair restate. This, the pending motion is to strike 73 cents general county, insert 70 cents, strike 99 cents school budget, insert a dollar and two cents. And I may have to refer back to the motion maker. I understand it. Dealing with Section 5, any deficiency will be made up from general county fund balance. Mr. Hasty? That's good. Mr. Samples? Oh, I'd like to ask uh, Commissioner Burkhalter. Do you intend to do anything then with the appropriations or do you, I, I mean, we're opening up a huge can of worms if we're going to approve a budget and we have no idea of what deficit there may be 
and we're going to fund that with fund balance. I'm, I'm not real excited about doing that. What's, I mean, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. It just sounds, I think, what Knoxville did, but uh, are we not opening up a huge can of worms here that we don't know how many are in there? State your point of order, sir. As a motion maker, I shall have the right to discuss first and foremost my motion before we have a discussion about my motion. That's, that's correct. Oh, I'm sorry. Go that's ahead. correct. Thank you. You recognize? I would like to first answer Commissioner Sample's question. The, if the appropriations remain the same, by removing the three pennies from General County, we would have at most an additional $900,000 of shortfall that would have to be made up out of fund balance. Right now we have a, over a $7.6 million balance in fund balance. We're looking at having over $1.2 million in turn back this year alone. Uh, where I came up with my dollars is we have a, by statute, the county trustee's office charges a commission of over $1.9 million for the collection of taxes, including state BEP dollars. The uh, trustee's office is efficiently run, which I commend the trustee for that. And his appropriations to fund his entire office is only about $440,000, leaving an overage of about 1.45 million. Only thing that I am doing is giving back to the schools, both Alcoa and Maryville, as well as Blount County through the split dollars, a refund or a rebate of the trustees fees that they pay back for the collection of their BEP dollars. Based upon, if you look at on the three pennies, that's a $900,000 reduction the trustee's office is forecasted to bring in an excess of 1.5 million over their budget. All we're doing is giving back to the schools what they're paying the trustee to collect state BEP dollars. I believe the school system this year's budget is spending close to 630,000 for trustees fees. Uh, that's just in Blount County by doing this, they would, uh, they would pay us 630,000 for the trustee. We would pay them back roughly 550,000 after split dollars. So the most that most of that being this can of worms, if everything goes through, would be 1.6 million 700,000. That's currently in the appropriation. Plus this 900 would be 1.6 million. Well, well short of the full 7.6 that we have in fund balance without counting the 1.2 million that's forecast to be turned back in in another uh, 10 days. So that's kind of the reason why I made my motion, just trying to give back to the schools what we can, because by statute, we can't change trustees' fees. So just trying to re-equalize the collections. Now, I don't know if I answered your question or not, Commissioner Samples, so. Just one more. Mr. Folks, recognized for the second time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's a little financial mumbo jumbo going on here. If you give more money to the schools, you got to take it from someplace else. And it's got to come out of the, if we don't cut budgets, it's got to get it come out of fund balance. Now, we can talk about our $7 million fund balance, but we should also talk about our $230 million of debt with another $70 million of unfunded liabilities on top of it that the ratings agencies are asking lots of questions about right now. So before we get too cavalier about this money we think we found, it's not there. We're going to take it out of fund balance, which we need to pay some of this debt down. Now. I am all for the schools getting the extra three pennies. However, we ought to do it the right way. We ought to cut the budgets in the general fund, and there are some that can be easily cut to produce that, and give it to the schools and show a little political courage. 
Thank you. Are the members ready for the question on the amendment? Mr. Melton, you recognize. Thank you, sir. Basically, what Mr. Burkhalter is saying is take three cents out of uh, the general purpose and apply it to the school. Is that what your that's your purpose? Thanks, sir. Again, are the members ready for the question? The pending motion is to amend the resolution by striking 73 cents general county, inserting 70 cents, striking 99 cents for schools, inserting a dollar two, and modifying section five of the resolution. Is that correct, sir? Chair stated the question, so there was no light slit when I started. So you are so very correct. Yes. The modification to section five of the re resolution is the one that says we're going to take it out of fund balance. Is that correct? That's correct. If there is okay. a shortfall, Thank you. if there's a shortfall, well, it will be. Yeah. Commissioner Farmer, you're yes. recognized, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Because I am an employee of Blunt County Schools, I have a conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare that my argument, my vote, answer only to my conscience, to my obligation, to my constituents and citizens this body represents. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hasty, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Because my wife is an employee of Bunk County Government, I have a conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare that my argument and my vote answer only to my conscience and to my obligation to my constituents and the citizens this body represents. Commissioner Helton, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Because I'm an employee of Circuit Court Clerk, I have a conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare that my argument and my vote answer only to my conscience, to my obligation to my constituents and the citizens this body represents. Seeing no lights, no one calling for the floor, vote yes to adopt resolution 1206-009. As adopted, we're we're on the as amended. We're, we're, we should be voting on the amendment. Excuse me. So therefore, a conflict of interest would not be in order. But thank you for, for going ahead and doing that. We're voting on the amendment, striking. I want to make sure we got this right. General County, strike point seven three, insert seven zero. Schools, strike point nine nine, insert. 102. Debt service will remain at 0.43. Vote yes to approve the amendment. Vote no not to approve. Six yeses, <clears throat> ten noes, uh, two abstain, three abstain, and two absent. The motion to amend the resolution fails. The pending motion is to adopt resolution 1206 009. Commissioner French, you recognized? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate what the gentleman said earlier uh, concerning our education of our young folks in Blount County, and we need we need to look toward the future. When my when my daughter graduated from high school, the uh, school.
school budget was a dollar and three cents out of the tax rate. That's been 12 or 13 years ago. My son graduated two to three years after that. The tax rate was at a dollar and seven cents for the schools. And since then, we've, we've cut the school budget quite a bit. Um, I've got a grandson that'll be in these schools in probably 12 or 13 years. And, and I'd like to continue the quality education for him. And by cutting the school budget, I don't see how we can do that. At the time my daughter graduated, I think there were probably between eight or 9,000 students in the system. When my son graduated, there were probably a little bit, a little over 9,000. Now we've got 11, a little over 11,000 people uh, kids in the system. Uh, to be honest with you, 13 years ago, if I went to the grocery store with a $100 bill and I go today, I can't get the same thing I can for that $100. How do we expect the schools to do that with an increase in the population in the, in the system and with, with inflation the way it is? I, I don't see how we can continue to cut the school budget. We're, we're, we say we're concerned about our kids' futures, but how can we do that if we're not concerned with their education? So are you, are you I'm, pre I'm prepared. Are you a motion? I'm prepared to make a motion to amend the appropriations, but I want to go a little bit farther than Mr. Burkhalter did. I'd like to take five cents out of the debt service and put it toward school okay. appropriations. So you, your, your motion is to amend by striking point three, four three, and to inserting and inserting point three eight, point three eight to debt service. Take it the ninety nine cents, point ninety nine cents from school appropriation, I'm not getting a dollar for leaving the county appropriations alone at 73. Leaving the budget still at 250, leaving it 250, tax rate still at 215. We have a motion to amend the resolution by striking debt service 0.43, insert 0.38, Strike point nine nine under schools and insert point zero one zero four, leaving general county at point seven three. Right. Is there a second? Commissioner Merle seconds. Discussion on the motion. Commissioner Wright recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess this question is for uh, Mr. Vineyard, if I may. Ask questions, sir. How much of the debt service uh, goes toward the school systems? In other words, if we were, if we were to roll that into uh, uh, the school, the 99 cents for schools, what would that figure be? In other words, how much money in debt service goes to schools? The overwhelming majority of the outstanding debt is for public schools. <clears throat> well, the way I figured, we have 60, right over 60 percent of the tax going to schools if you included that. Is that a correct statement? Mr. Vineyard? Rephrase that again. I don't think I. In other words, if we included in the operation of the schools, which is 99 cents, if we included the debt service that goes to schools, then that figure would be about 61% of our tax rate, which would be well above 99 cents. I've not done that arithmetic. I can tell you that when I say overwhelming majority, over 75% of our debt is for public education. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
Commissioner Samples, you're recognized. I'd like to ask Mr. Henry a question. Go for it. Uh, Randy, what, if we cut our debt service by five cents, a couple things, what's it, you know, are we gonna be able to make the strokes? And secondly, what's that gonna do to our ratings if they look and see we're taking money away from debt service? Mr. Vineyard. I mean, then uh, we're taking we're taking a million and a half you're, dollars. You're reducing you're reducing revenues by a million and a half dollars, um, and at least from what I've heard, I don't know where that's to come from, where it's to be made up from. Uh, you mentioned also that, and we've heard a good bit of discussion about how important it is that we address our debt service tonight from a variety of people who have spoken. Uh, I'll draw your attention to Standard Standard and Poor's has been mentioned tonight. Standard & Poor's is one of the rating agencies that rates the county's outstanding debt service. And on April the 4th, 2011, the last time that this community went to the bond market for debt, four schools at that time, uh, they issued a rating. And our credit rating at S&P is a double A minus, double A minus, double A with a negative outlook. Now what that means is, we've also heard mentioned here tonight that we're under review right now, and we are, we're due to go to committee next week at Standard & Poor's, and the purpose of that is to annually review our outstanding debt. And right now, we have three things going for us according to Standard & Poor's, and I quote, economically strong and stable service area coupled with participation in an eight county area in East Tennessee. Two, steady and stable property tax base growth. Three, limited future capital needs. However, and I quote, the above credit strengths are partially offset by our view of the county's one, weakened financial position with drawdowns of reserves in fiscal 2010 and 2011, two, elevated carrying charges coupled with below average amortization of principal, and that refers to how much of our debt service we're retiring each year of principal, and three, moderate overall net debt burden. So if I could characterize, I represented in our phone conference interview the other day with Standard & Poor's that we would be, as has been mentioned tonight, increasing fund balance this year, and we are on track to do that. But I also mentioned that we had cut significantly from the current year's use of fund balance, and we were lessening our use of fund balance in this proposed 2013 budget. And the last statement in their review from 2011 was continued structural imbalance or general fund drawdowns could cause us to no lower no to lower the rating. I don't know if that addresses your question, Mr. Sanders. Anything else, Mr. Sanders? Thank you, Mr. Vineyard. No, it's exactly what I expected. Uh, I would also just like to point out that, as Commissioner French referred to the amount of uh, pennies going to the schools 10 years ago was significantly higher than it is today. The, the tax penny was worth considerably less 10 years ago. I was on the budget committee along with, uh, I guess maybe Ken was, I'm not sure. And the, and the penny was worth probably $100,000 or less. 66,000, thank you. And so we, the more we put more in the schools, Penny's worth is going to be worth $310,000 in the upcoming year. Thank you, Mr. Vineyard. Commissioner Kaler, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I want to applaud Commissioner French. Uh, I agree 100% with his uh, appraisal of where our schools are and where they need to be. But I also say that we we generally talk about moving three pennies here and five pennies there. Those pennies represent hundreds of thousands of dollars. These are, in my opinion, and I, I can't speak for my fellow commissioners, but these are not decisions that I can make in a snapshot in time. These things have to be thought out 
more than, than I can absorb in a 15-minute period. I abstain on the first vote, and I am not comfortable with moving hundreds of thousands of dollars because I cannot guarantee what the repercussions of my yes or no vote will have on the rest of, uh, of, of our situation, as Mr. Vineyard has explained. So I will continue to abstain. Commissioner Melton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think Mr. Vineyard hit the point there. I think 75% of our debt is with schools. Uh, we built a number of schools uh, in our debt. I believe you said 75% of it, and I want to say around 210 million. I'm not positive on that figure and everything. But I think it'd be a disaster, in my opinion, to take from debt service and put it as uh, Mr. French would like to do in the schools. We, we have to pay this debt off, and I think it'd be disastrous to take away from the fund balance or the uh, debt service. That's my feeling. Commissioner Folks. Uh, sorry, I've been covered. Thank you, sir. Commissioner French. One more, I'd like to make one more statement. I think debts, debt service is important, I, and I, I agree with you. I think we need to pay our debts as, as soon as we can. However, we can always go back and pay our debts. The danger, the, the damage we do to these kids, the damage we do to these students by not educating, giving them proper education, you can't go back and fix that. Are the members ready for the question? The pending motion is to amend the resolution by striking under schools point nine nine, inserting one point zero four, debt service striking point four three, inserting point three eight. Vote yes to amend the resolution. Vote no not to amend the resolution. Please vote. Three, yes, <clears throat> three yeses, 14 noes, and two abstain. The motion to amend fails. Now the pending motion is to adopt the immediate depending motion is to adopt resolution 1206-009. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to adopt the resolution, the original resolution 12-06-009. Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no, not to adopt. Please vote. We have 14 yeses, three noes, two abstain, and two yeses. 14 yes, the resolution is adopted. The next item of business is F5. The chair will stand for motion on resolution number 1206010, resolution making appropriations for the year beginning July 1st, 2012 and ending June 30th, 2013. Mr. Lale moves, Commissioner Burkhalter seconds. The motion is to adopt resolution number 12 dash 06 dash 010. Mr. Folks, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Finally, we get to talk about the budget. This is the first time all 21 commissioners have discussed this budget. What a way to do business. The citizens of the communities that we represent want the county budget to reflect their priorities, not those priorities 
of a few powerful office holders and special interests. Yet, the process we use to prepare the budget seems to be producing exactly the opposite result. A big part of the problem is that the current process gives the full commission just one chance to discuss the budget tonight. It is simply not possible to make sure a $168 million budget fits the priorities of the citizens in one short discussion. The proposed budget is the result of this flawed process, and that budget has many problems. First, it's obviously not agreed to by all parties. The schools are being left 3.9 million short. Second, this budget takes nearly a million dollars as it stands from the reserve we need to repay our $230 million debt. Third, this budget increases rather than decreases the budgets of departments where waste has repeatedly been a problem. Let me give you a few examples. The Sheriff's Department is increasing 7.4%. Now, mind you, measure that against 2% inflation. The Circuit Court Clerk is going up 6.9%. Other general administrations going up 8.5%. Parks and Rec, of all things, is going up 14.7%. This one is particularly curious because Parks and Rec has nearly a million dollars of unspent money from previous appropriations. Why are we increasing the budget 14.7% when they got a million dollars laying around? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, we could use some of that for the schools. Industrial Development Board, up 23.7%. Why are we increasing the budget of a department that has saddled us with nearly $7 million in debt for an empty technology park and a new industrial building that was built more than five years ago and has sat empty ever since? It is a shame that most other county departments have worked very, very hard to reduce their budgets, only to see their efforts obliterated by a few wasteful big spenders. Most important, the budget that is before us does nothing to address three very large budget problems. These problems are rapidly getting worse and are attracting the attention of the bond rating agencies. And when you're 230 million in debt, you don't want to attract their attention. The first major problem is related to something called post-employment medical benefits. The county is currently committed to pay 100% of an employee's medical insurance costs from the time he or she retires until they reach age 65. The county retirement plan permits employees to retire after 30 years of service. If the employee decides to retire at age 50, the county must pay all medical insurance costs until he or she reaches age 65. The county importantly, is not putting any money aside to pay for this benefit. The amount of money the county is obligated to pay current employees for this benefit already exceeds $23.6 million. This obligation increased more than 20% in a single year last year 
So this is a large obligation growing rapidly. The cash the taxpayers are laying out to cover this because there's no fund to cover it has nearly tripled since 2009 to more than a million and a half dollars a year. This rate of increase is quickly making this benefit a major financial problem for our county and its taxpayers. It is exactly the kind of runaway benefit that put General Motors into bankruptcy a few years ago. And this budget does nothing about it. The second major financial problem not addressed in this budget is the spiraling cost of the pension plan for county employees. The employees pay 5% of their salary toward the cost of that retirement plan. The taxpayers contribute 12.39% in addition, that's a two and a half to one match on what the employee pays. Most taxpayers in private industry feel lucky to get a one to one match on their 401ks. More important, the percentage the taxpayers must contribute to the plan has risen by more than 20% in just three years. But even these contributions are not enough to keep this plan afloat. In 2009, the last time the fund was looked at by an actuary, the fund was more than $19 million short of what is needed to pay the benefits promised to our current employees. The state has recently repassed a new law to give counties more options in handling their pension plans. Many municipalities, including the city of Knoxville and Knox County, are addressing the spiral costs of their, spiraling costs of their plans. We have done nothing in this budget. The third major problem not addressed by this budget is the termination of the $100 million worth of swaps that we got into in our bond mess that the county has outstanding. This can has been kicked down the road for years by two commissions. These kicks are proving to be very, very expensive. I'll give you an example. In September of 2009, we could have terminated all these swaps for $10 million. Well, certainly this is a budget problem which is pending on the floor. Okay, I will continue. The cost to terminate these swaps today is $27 million. We could have terminated them in 09 for 10. Today, because we kicked the can down the road, it now costs $27 million. So $17 million. We could have built a school like that. We could have done a lot with that difference in money. These are the kind of things we need to be talking about. These retirement, medical benefits, pension, and swap termination costs add nearly $72 million to the county's current debt obligations, bringing the total to over $300 million. This buzz budget does nothing about this problem. It should not be a sur surprise, therefore, that a recent letter uh, to our finance director from the bond ratings agency asked very specific questions about these problems, much more specific than he read earlier. They see these problems very clearly, and that isn't good. And it's especially not good that we may be ignoring them. We don't have good answers for the rating agencies. 
because this commission has not even discussed many of these issues. In my opinion, there is a serious problem with the way we create a budget. And I think Commissioner Keller was alluding to it earlier. A good budget process should address the major financial problems facing the county. A budget should implement the spending priorities of the community. Let me give you an example of what I mean by spending priorities. On a recent visit to one of our high schools, a teacher invited me in to show me a, a whiteboard in her room. The whiteboard was black and unusable. It was completely worn out, worn out. On a visit to an elementary school, a very talented teacher pleaded for a $900 whiteboard so she could use some, exist some exciting new software to do a better job of teaching math to her young students. In the last month, we have also seen moves by the sheriff to build a $230,000 barn for his horses and to buy a to spend $32,800 on something called side scan sonar. Do you, any of you, do any, but does anybody think that this reflects the priorities of our community? This is why we need to talk budget and spend a lot more time on it. We need a budget process that involves discussions before the entire commission in March, not in June. We need a process that addresses these serious financial problems facing the county. We need a budget process that listens to our citizens and reflects their priorities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to say something about this budget process, and it's in conflict with what Commissioner Folks just said. The Budget Committee spent the last four and a half months in publicly advertised meetings putting this budget together. We held a public hearing on June the 11th. I think maybe one or two, or just very few people showed up. And we had this budget on the agenda on June the 12th, this new budget. So don't come in here and say to me that this is the first time that this budget has been before this commission because the records and every person, most everyone here was here. This budget has been before this commission. No one showed up at the public hearing to raise objections. I think some suggestions were made and we barely discussed it at the agenda. We were, all the budget committee was here. We were here to listen. The mayor was here, the finance director was here. So don't tell me that this budget has not been in the public and before this commission, before this night. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are the members ready for the question? The pending motion is to adopt Resolution 12-06-010. At this time, are there any members wish to read a conflict of interest statement? Commissioner Farmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Because I am an employee of Blunt County Schools, I have a conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare my, argument, my vote answer only to my conscience, to my obligation to the constituents, citizens this body represents. Commissioner Helton. Because I am an employee of the circuit court clerk, I have conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare my argument and my vote answer only to my conscience and to my obligation to my constituents and the citizens this body represents. Commissioner Hasty. 
because my wife is an employee of Blount County Government, I have a conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare that my argument and my vote answer only to my conscience and to my obligation to my constituents and the citizens this body represents. Commissioner Lale. Yes, sir, I need to borrow someone's, thank you. Because my wife is an employee of the Blood County Schools, I have a conflict of interest in the proposal about to be voted. However, I declare that my argument and my vote answer only to my conscience and to my obligation to my constituents and the citizen this body represents. Vote yes to adopt resolution 1206010. Vote no not to adopt the resolution. Please vote. Fifteen yeses, four noes, and two absent. Four noes, two absent. Resolution is adopted. Moving to item F6 has already been addressed. Move to F7. The chair will stand for motion on F7 to set a public hearing for August 7, 2012. One moment. The chair. Commission's not in order. We'll take a break for. I hear a motion for recess. Do I have a second? Without objection, we'll recess for five minutes. Will commissioners please be seated. Commission, please be in order. <laughs> we're missing, we're missing Commissioner Wright and Commissioner Birchfield, Commissioner Carver. There we go. Miss Clerk, we have a quorum. We do have a quorum. Next order, next time on business is F9. The chair will stand for motion on F7, excuse me, to set a public hearing for August 7, 2012, 630 in room 430, Blount County Courthouse, for the purpose of hearing testimony concerning a resolution to amend the zoning resolution of Blount County. Do have a motion? Mr. Wright moves. Mr. Lale seconds. The motion is to set a public hearing on resolution to amend the zoning resolution of Blount County, Tennessee Article 13, Sections 9.4C, A, 9.1D, 9.2D, 9.3D, 9.10D, to regulate pain management clinics for August 7, 2012, 630, in Room 430 of the Blount County Courthouse. Are the members ready for the question? Vote yes to set the public hearing. Vote no not to set. Please vote. Public hearing is set. Next item of business is F8. The chair will stand for motion on F8, resolution 120613, resolution regarding the transferring of property utilized for the Smoky Mountain Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mr. Helt moves. And Mr. Lale seconds. The motion is to adopt resolution 120613. Discussion. Commission will be in order. The pending motion is to adopt 1206-13. Vote yes to adopt the resolution. Vote no not to adopt. Please vote. We have 19 yeses. <clears throat> the resolution is adopted at this time Item G, announcements and statements. 
Does any commissioner have an announcement or statement? Seeing no lights, move to item H, input on items not on the agenda. Could you come forward, sir, and state your name, your, your uh, district? Okay. Um, I was speaking to one of the county commissioners just a few minutes ago, and I sincerely made a comment that I really wish that I didn't have to come. But if I ever did come to these commissioner meetings, the, last, the, the thing that I would like to do more than anything is to come and sing your praises. Um, that's what I would really wish that I could do is trust my county commissioners to do, the, do their homework. What, what very much disturbed me, and I've spoken about this almost every time I've got up, is the difference between a, a politician and a statesman. And um, I don't know these people that have been adversely affected in their homes by this racetrack that the sheriff built. I don't know them, but it sounds like for a number of years they exhausted every non-litigious uh, request for, for some respect, consideration, and that fell on deaf ears. And, and a county commissioner truly should have a humble servant attitude that it would not be necessary that after exhausting two years of petitioning peacefully the redress of grievances over a problem that this county caused, that they were forced to get a lawyer and sue the county. That's pretty bad. I, I, I agree with the commissioner. We shouldn't whitewash that. Statesmen don't treat their county, their members that way. But then they had a lawsuit, and now we're in litigation trying to settle this lawsuit quietly so we can avoid further legal bills. And then we come up with a solution that appears on its face to in all probability be a violation of the law. What surprises me is, in light of that fact, I only had three county commissioners that had the courage to say, we're not gonna vote for something that at least it looks like it's against the law. And I don't understand that. And I would love for those that voted for it to explain it to me. Because even if you cannot do it, it's still against the law. And you voted for it anyway. And that's, that's what I wanted to say, and I'm, I'm disappointed. And it's for those kind of reasons that people like me who are unimportant come to these meetings and say, don't forget the little people. Thank you very much. I'm Linda King, District 4, and I'm going to get your mind off finances for a moment. I understand that a certain number of educational hours is required by each member of the Planning Commission yearly. I'd expect that training to be things like state property laws, health department requirements on septic systems, reading plats, and so on. A few months ago, I heard our Director of Planning invite the planners to plan ET ses sessions and enable them to use those hours as training. Then I became concerned at last month's meeting when I witnessed our planner, John Lamb, hand out at least a list of 23 subjects to the members, asking that they choose three topics on which they'd like training. I can understand his topics like roads, streets, highways, and traffic. However, the topics he chose included the following subjects, tourism, higher education, K-12 school systems, community assistance services, air travel and transport, hospital and medical care, electricity supply and distribution, and law enforcement, courts, and jail. You all, except one, recently voted against Agenda 21, and I'm sure that most of you see its connection to Plan ET. The 23 topics included by our planner touch on every facet of our life, just as Agenda 21 does. It seems that he is pushing an agenda to have our county committees step more and more into the big brother mentality of the United Nations. Because the planning office is under the mayor, 
I would like him to look into the matter of these 23 topics, address this concern, and put a halt to this insidious behavior. Our county is contributing $70,000 of Mr. Lamb's time to work with the original five county regional network. Recently, Union County backed out knowing the destructive nature of this UN socialist plan. I think we too should discontinue our contribution and since we seem able to donate so much time for our planner to be away from Blount County, maybe we can do without that employee's position entirely. Thank you. Commissioner Burkhalter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, um, I know I'm a little bit out of order, but this is a question for, uh, for Mr. Vineyard, if he could report back sometime later on. Uh, in reviewing the 2011 audit report, it says that the uh, Blount County Children's Home, chartered as a Tennessee nonprofit corporation, is a component, as defined in GASB, of Blount County, Tennessee. The county approves all board members and has financial accountability for the home. Does that financial accountability mean that if the home goes under, files bankruptcy, or closes its doors, that we are left holding the bag for all their unpaid debts and liabilities? Mr. Vineyard, uh, if you need time to research this. That's what I'll have to do. I don't have an answer. Yeah, and that, that's how I don't I don't know the answer either because I was never under the impression that we were accountable for their for their finances. So if you can research that, especially since we're getting ready to come up underneath another audit period, I'd like to see if we can get that put into the next year's audit report statement exactly what our exposure is as an unreported uh, liability. Thank you. Having no other business on the agenda, the chair will stand for a motion to adjourn. Stand adjourned.